Welcome to this tutorial video on how to make your Whoop footage a little bit better. Uh, I got a lot of questions uh, how to do that, so I just uh, decided to make a tutorial. Um, this I'm usually not doing this and this is not my strong suit, so if you are expecting a, a, a short and professional video tutorial, then just go somewhere else. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's start with the with the blank um, with the new with the new um, project. So it's none of my stuff is in here. Um, and this oh yeah, this is a uh, um, you can oh, scratch. Uh, you can do most of the stuff with the free version, but an important part you can't. Uh, the denoising is not available. I think in the free version you have to buy the studio version. And I don't think there's a, there's a workaround, uh, except um, if you find a version on the internet or something. Um, but um, don't do that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but the uh, making the 4x3 aspect, uh, aspect, aspect ratio footage go super view, you can do that, and also the motion blur, you can do that. Uh, you, it's just a little bit more complicated, but not really. So, yeah, let's uh, just start and to make a new timeline. Where is it? Ah, yeah. And uh, don't use your project settings. Um, make sure that um, it's on 30 FPS. And also, very important, make sure you record in 60 FPS. Um, of course, your your uh, goggle or whatever needs to be able to, and also your camera. <clears throat> uh, uh, you can set it to PAL because it will be at 25 uh, frames per second. Uh, if you can switch that uh, with the camera, you have to buy another one, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. And otherwise it won't look good. Um, um, because uh, for the motion blur, I, I think it's somehow uses the additional frames and makes it look better. So, so yeah, we have 60 FPS uh, DVR and put it in a 30 FPS timeline. And yeah, set this to scale into image to fit here as well as in the output and just create one and uh, close that. And then we have um, some footage. And um, the first thing we will do is go to the effects tab and put an adjustment clip right on top of it. What's going on? Yeah. make it large and then um, first we will do the super view thing it's not that complicated oh by the way um, the way I will I, I don't have the I mean I do have a switch for the OSD but I don't use it in flight just for like some vlogging thing I will do maybe in the future because then you switch it back on and we will end up with a dead battery so I don't want to do that the, the way you get around it except of course the um, the uh, warnings at the end, but I will put it uh, put the OSD element in the, in the in the corner, and they do, they will get morphed out the way. Most. So that's that's the way I do it. And we will go into the fusion fusion tab while the uh, adjustment clip is um, activated, and so we will see. And it's important that you see the blank uh, the blank things on the on the uh, outside. That's important. And yeah, we will uh, go shift and uh, backspace, no, uh, spacebar, and we will search for um, lens distort with the lens and the uh, things. And then I will have to go to um, a screenshot of mine because uh, I think it would I tinkered with it a bunch and came up with this uh, number. So yeah, we, you would just have to pause it and put everything in there manually, that's the only way uh, I will, anyway. So we will do that and maybe skip forward. Yeah, so uh, when you've done that, you will end up with a stretched image. Uh, there's a bit of 
uh, the other OSD element I put in that like I put in a few days ago. So that's a bit larger. So you have to like uh, in, or either put in different numbers. I don't want to bother with bother with bother with it right now. Or you go um, to the clip itself and uh, um, maybe um, make it a bit uh, bigger. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Either way, and um, but we will go back to the adjustment clip. Um, and then we will add the uh, motion blur. We will we'll do another one of these um, shift and uh, spacebar, and we will search for um, uh, optical flow, I think. Yeah. We will leave that and we will do another one. Um, uh, vector motion blur, I think. Yeah. And that's basically it. Um, the intensity you use uh, this uh, slider for scale, but we will leave it at uh, we we will leave it at that uh, for the moment. And that's basically it. It's not that complicated. Um, yeah, you will see it already a little bit. Um, yeah, and then the denoise uh, thing only. Um, only uh, doable with the studio version. Uh, you will have to um, like disable the uh, the track with the uh, adjustment clip. Go straight to the. Uh, I mean, you can do another adjustment clip, but uh, for some reason I don't like to do that. I go straight onto the uh, the clip, and um, yeah, you can do that all within one note. But I can show you later in my real project. Uh, there's a bunch of notes for all the different things. But um, you go into what is it? Yeah, here. Um, I'd have a screenshot with the values. Oh yeah, you see it. That's my note tree. But here's the section for motion blur. It's quite straight. It's quite quite straightforward. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe I don't have to put it in right. Now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course you don't need to put in motion blur here when you've uh, done it in the uh, in the fusion tab. So you can um, leave that at zero. Um, but here you, I've set, I've set it to five, I think. Yeah, five, better, large. Yeah, I don't know why I should do that right now. Um, 20 and uh, better large and uh, maybe a bit of explanation what this does um, the spatial threshold or the spatial noise reduction is just it cleans up the like a still image uh, the noise that's there and the temporal threshold threshold is quite a bit more important for our FPV stuff because it will take um, the frames before and after and see what's different and uh, it removes the noise in that regard. It's not completely gone, but it's a little bit better. So um, yeah, I mean, don't overdo it. Um, oh, I set the blend, and, but again, I don't use that now. So blend to 40. Um, you can play with that a bit, and I already did that, but um, that's the... Yeah, I mean, you can put it way up and it gets cleaner every time, but it's, then you end up with a blurry image. Um, so that's a fine line. Um, yeah, let's go to um, maybe my uh, note tree in my other project. Yeah, my um, computer is not that fast, so I have to, uh, like, when I edit, I have to DC, deselect uh, the whole grade, so, uh, so otherwise it won't work. Uh, at least not with the, uh, like, grain and noise reduction going on. That's that's just too much for it. Um, yeah, so uh, here are some things that I uh, leave, leave like that all the time. and. Um, if they are grayed out, then of course uh, they are not um, not active, and I put it on uh, whenever I need the stuff. Because some cameras, for example, um, I have like um, I can I don't know if I can find. Uh, 
Let me see. Ah, no, this is all like more in the air. Oh, yeah, there, there you see it a bit. Um, my cameras often, uh, I mean, I use the Kent Addix Lite, but I'm sure other cameras do it as well. Uh, they they aren't like perfect. They have some color casts, maybe a uh, vignetting or something. And I try to get, get around that a bit by uh, doing, so this, this is after it and this is before. Uh, and what I did is um, I made a selection, um, a window, and after that, um, I just went into the lift sections, which is the um, well, the bottom part, the the, the shadows, and make a meta correction like the other the, in the other direction. Like when it's a, a blue cast, I go to the more warm side, and yeah. And then um, what I also do is like um, make make it so that it's only affecting the the darker parts although it's maybe not uh, it's not like because i'm only i mean i could yeah just just as i think of it i could leave that because i'm just affecting the lift the, the shadow so it's uh, but anyway i do that um so it helps a bit and um, what, what i do else oh the d flicker um i heard from shawnee d a shout out um i haven't touched it a bunch I tried it a, f a bit, but it made some weird things, so I have to continue with that. Um, it helps also with the um, with the static to, to, to get rid of that. Um, you just have to um, set it to fluorescent, 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 and that's about it. And yeah, maybe deal with the uh, intensity a bit. Yeah, that's our noise reduction. Um, this is just uh, a slight softening of the edges, just to pull the um, the viewer more to the center and to have the effect of sharpness. Because sharpness, you have you, you can you have a um, um, I don't know how to say it. It appears sharper when there are things that are more blurry, you know. So th that way. It's a bit more appear sharper in the center as it is, as it was when it was sharp everywhere. That's, I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where that deep saturation. That's a way to make the saturation a bit more deeper, but it doesn't work any, every time. So I just mostly leave, leave it off. Uh, saturation max. Um, it just um, you can go in here. Where is it? Yeah, saturation with just saturation. Uh, it just um, it basically soft clips. Uh, when you make something like this, the most uh, saturated parts of the image, uh, which in book footage it's quite common. So um, I don't know if it makes a difference right now in this frame. Yeah, a little bit, but maybe if there's a red or something, then it's really visible. And uh, just leave that. Uh, low high is a bit of just um, makes it a bit um, yeah a bit more um, soft in contrast contrast wise. Why is it not doing anything? Maybe because maybe because it's a low, low contrast image uh, to begin with a uh, frame. And also what I just see here, uh, I haven't talked about that. The motion blur, of course, is not um, it's not perfect. Um, Mostly when you fly over gravel or something, you see that um, the, the the problem is that you will get some form of like ghost images, um, where you get a uh, motion blur, but under it, under like beneath it, there are um, sharper, yeah, ghost-like type images, um, or like of these poles. There, oh, well, you see it here. Um, that's. Uh, that's uh, uh, tinker with it a bit. I haven't found a way to get rid of that. It's just, yeah, it's just the way it is. Um, it helps a bit, like I said, to have like a 30 FPS timeline and 60 FPS um, footage. Otherwise, it will be even worse. But um, yeah, it, of course, it's better the, the darker the environment is and the sl slower the shutter. But yeah, it's just the way it is. But if you haven't noticed it by, by now, then it's probably not so bad. <laughs> uh, here's a bit of, um, I don't know if you 
let's see here. This is a composite node, and um, maybe it doesn't need to be, but uh, here's um, I try to get rid of the yeah the um, there's uh, in the sky often there is this um, I don't know what's the color current color called lila I would say in German. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know, purple, I guess, uh, and uh, I don't like that, the look of it, so i try to get um, get around that, and let me see if I can, what's going on, okay, um, yeah, that's it, uh, so you basically how this works, you, you pick, um, you need three points, like to, um, like to alter one point, right, um, and then you can move that uh, out of the way, or not out of the way, but move it to a different hue. And um, you don't have, yeah, that's, I don't know what to say about it. Um, I mean, you have to be a little bit uh, careful because uh, you can like overdo it and have some, uh, some, some, yeah, aberration, that's the wrong word, uh, like the steps in the sky, in the image, because the gradients aren't nice anymore. But yeah, that's maybe a bit um, off topic right now. But anyway, so we go exit that. That's basically the same for um, for the concrete. Often there is some, some things going on in there with red, not so much in this one, but you see the speckles in here. Let me see if I can go in there. Um, yeah, that's it's, that's often like a, like a, like I said, a red or orange hue that I picked here. You can like drop a drop a thing here, and then you it select that, and you can alter the um, yeah the the softness of it and the broadness and stuff like that. And usually, yeah, the saturation and the luminance. But I leave those um, uh, to be of the whole range because uh, that's just uh, what I want but you could also if it's only in the shadows then you can like uh, go to luminance and uh, have uh, the have it like only affecting the, the shadows and do some softening right there uh, but maybe I, that's too much for this video you have to look into that but, but just know that it's a thing you can do and um, like select the colors and uh, have that track it, you know, and you will see the thumbnail that 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 is doing that. Same I do from like if there is more a magenta cast, uh, which is there quite often. And this is just an um, for uh, for contrast, just a regular curve. I did. Um, yes, yeah, so that it doesn't affect the highlights too much, but I give a bit of pop here. Heavy spike, what's that? I don't know. Here's some glow. Um, it just, um, you don't see it right here because the image is though. Um, uh, maybe you see it here. Yeah. It gives it a bit of, uh, I mean, that's quite, um, quite dull. Uh, and this is, gives it a bit more uh, I don't know, the gradient looks nicer, I think, uh, and it's also, you, you don't get the sense of it being so dull in the highlights. I mean, to a certain extent, I like that, um, but it's, um, and even that, it's, um, that is uh, not really white, but it's a bit more in the direction. And yeah, the OSD gets really funky because of the um, motion blur, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. Last grain is last bit of thing. That's last bit is grain. You can like if you copy the, but that's not a. Um, it's just a opacity. And what I do is softness. I increase that a bit. Um, grain size also, I think. But yeah, genau, <laughs> genau. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, I'm sure I forgot something. Ah, bye. Rough draft. Oh, stop the boys. Oh.